So uh, today I'm going to talk about a project that is part of a very big project that is called Andorra Living Lab. It's a project in collaboration between MIT, the government in, of Andorra, and some other companies in Andorra. And um, we are actually working in many different topics, but the main idea is to make Andorra a living lab, a more humanized perspective, and so on, I think so. And um, we are working mainly in five topics. So we are working in tourist patterns, we are working in mobility, we are deploying a, a self, um, a, a vehicle, a, self, a vehicle, a self driving vehicle. We are working on energy, uh, we are working in uh, innovation, and we are working in uh, urban planning. So what, what I'm going to talk about today is about energy and uh, what happens when you mix sensors with um, elementary school. So uh, this project takes that question, actually, and the, the answer is we have termites for electronautas. This is a project that is also, as we like to do, is a very big collaboration between many different institutions. Uh, we have uh, the MIT, we have uh, the University of Pandora, we have the government, and we have many other actors. And actually, if you see by face, everyone is contributing in a very different way. So we are very happy about to say that this is always important. Collaboration is like the fundamental thing for us. And um, what we did is that we deployed sensors developed in MIT that are called mites and termites, the second generation. And we deploy sensors such as CO2, uh, humidity, temperature, and other presence sensors in the school in Andorra. And um, then there was this big question of how to make this and how to start this, um, how to make this an education experience because of course, you can deploy sensors, but you, you really have to, to work on how to interact with these kids. So we start to see that the first point that we have to do is like educate the professors. So the University of Andorra actually is contributing in teaching the professors the knowledge that they need to know to uh, work with these sensors. Then we have another program where students talk with the researchers in MIT and exchange ideas. and. Um, then we are working in the visualization of the data and finally what we want to achieve is that students become like little scientists and they are able to do their own reading and interpretation of these sensors. So normally the visualization here is like quite, quite tricky because this is the typical visualization that you have from sensors and this is not really easy to read for professionals but also for kids it's even more complex so if you have, um, oh sorry, if you have a reading like this, where kids see the project like uh, in a very different way from pollution, from seeing each other, we realize that we actually we have to have a different approach of how to show this information to kids. So we start to work on that. So we start, uh, we start to draw, and I start to draw uh, more. So how to convert this information in something that they will be interesting. So what we thought is that the first thing is how they perceive their own environment independent from the sensors. So what, what they do normally is that they know if they are happy, if they are sad, if they are tired, if they are, they have, they are cold or they are okay in the place. So we start to design a daily survey what they can really mark every day what they are working on. And we want also to approach their own environment, so the school, their own, um, their own room. And then there was this issue about, yes, but kids love color. So what we do with color in this point, how to, to approach color. So we start to see the weather conditions and we start to see how the colors are correlated to different conditions. And um, this, for example, is in Andorra. This is a very beautiful picture and this also is in Andorra. And we start to take these colors and what we did at the end is we designed an experience that they just can see every day a different icon with the different color depending on what is happening and they have like a surprise effect like the windy day in which they are going to see that things are happening differently. And it's actually really interesting. I'm really happy to see, go every day and check out the website and see what is the weather, what is happening when it's gray or when it's uh, the, uh, sunny the day. It's, this is amazing. And uh, what, they can, what they are going to do is to register every their mood, how there is their energy, how they feel the temperature, and how the levels of noise are working. And this is quite interesting for us because we, we want them to start to understand that, but also to start to think, um, to compare that to sensors. 
And we are also interesting because we think that sensors are something that is statical, but actually what is happening in the space can definitely be good or bad depending on, on, um, on, on the situation. So for example, if we have a very high CO2 levels, but maybe the kids are very happy, this could be a very different layout. So, and from the second point, of course, we want to make them scientists. So what we want to do is that they, they can relate this information with the current information of the sensor. So for example, we convert sensors in different icons. A present sensor is a little ghast that you can see, or there is a guy running for movement, or there are the windows, the door, the lights, the curtains. And uh, what we want to do is that they slowly start to relate this information and they start to make conclusions and slowly they start to understand what these parameters are and why they can be important in their own everyday life. So we are going to do the first test in two weeks. I'm very excited about that with the kids and uh, I will be happy to just, uh, uh, if you can keep update about this, it's very, very nice because it's a huge challenge to mix technology, education and sustainability. Thank <laughs> you.